Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Going Racing Podcast here on the channel episode number 21 coming at you guys here today as usual. Uh, we don't have Edwi, Ed, Edwi, we don't have Edward with us unfortunately tonight but we do have myself Gary Owen as well as I am joined by Matt O'Brien. Uh huh. As well as Mr. Jay Cook. Hello. How are we all mm. doing tonight gentlemen? Uh, doing fine. Pretty Gucci. Anything noteworthy happened in the last week? Uh, well, you guys kind of knew about my rib thing, but right? oh, your what thing? My rib bothering me. Oh, I don't. I feel like you mentioned it, but I can't remember. I, I tweeted about it. Oh yeah, that's where I saw it. Yeah, yeah like it's it's pretty, it's gone now. Like I don't I don't even know what happened, but like. It was to the point where like it was legitimately hard to breathe. But sim racing hurt. does to you, dude. <laughs> I don't think that. I only league race really. I don't do really. You won't see me in many official races. Let's just say that. I'm gonna be in uh, IDK players Dynaco 400 next weekend. What track is that? Daytona. Arca card. Oh, oh that's that should be fun. Yeah, so that that'll be interesting. Well, it's not the, it's not the cup car, so that'll be. <laughs> yeah, who knows it's gonna. Ah, uh, God! At least it's not the cup cars. Um, speaking of cup cars, we had some NASCAR this past week, and everybody, this is an interesting episode here because all we really have to do is touch on an All Star event, um, a little bit of F one news, and some rumors that are like probably guaranteed to happen. Uh, as well as we'll touch on some Nitro. But honestly, the main point I think we're going to talk about today is E3 stuff, is we are a gaming kind of podcast as well, specifically NASCAR gaming, but we're going to go dive down that realm today with some just general gaming stuff. But we're going to start it off, and we're going to talk about the All-Star Race at Texas Motor Speedway. General thoughts, Jay, um, I don't want your thoughts on the format or anything i want your thoughts on what the the racing product for texas motor speedway considering what we've had in the past there what would you grade what we saw on sunday the racing product was better than what we've had recently at texas especially since the repave uh but it was still very bad and especially in terms of of races we've had at other tracks uh it, it was still not uh, that greater of a racing product, and if I had to grade it on a scale of one to ten, I'd give a normal Texas race probably like a point six. I'd give this one maybe a one point two. Uh, so I mean, it was you know there there was a little bit of entertainment factor for a lap or two after a restart, uh, and then from there it was just kind of single file unless you had a Hendrick car bump draft by somebody. It it looked like, um, to me. NASCAR knew what they were doing with the format. They're like, we have to have a lot of restarts very quick to keep it any interesting at all. Um, because once they ran a certain amount of laps, they were just spread out like that one where they did thirty laps. I don't, I, I, I lost interest so quick. There was nothing going on other than those oh, yeah, mandatory I, pit I stops. Honestly, did not watch. I don't think a moment of that stage aside from the first like two laps. I don't Matt, remember anything from it aside oh, from yeah, them pitting uh, right away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Hamlin like came in right away, and then Larson came in late or something. There was like a weird caution or something. But Matt, what did you think about it? Um, from a normal Texas race, it was nuclear waste improved to utter garbage. <laughs> That's one improvement. Think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gar from nuclear waste to. Utter tr dumpster fire garbage. Um, it was so, it was. What, what what? Like I don't know how many people are gonna fall for this illusion that close racing is good, right? Um, tell me, it, it, did anyone really think in those last eight laps when Kozlowski when Larson cleared Kozlowski? Do you really anyone think Kozlowski was actually gonna be able to do anything? No. No, and and then you have NASCAR Twitter like a battle till the end. No, there was no battle. It was, it was your package giving a false illusion of what of something that was never going to happen. Uh, I feel like 
that 10 lap dash was the best one we had had though at least um three wide move was pretty neat and larson made a very like bold move to get to the outside of the nine uh that worked out pretty well but like overall like i, I don't know it wasn't terrible good. It, like I said, it was I mean, better big, than normal honestly, points the biggest, races there. Uh, my the, my disappointment that Bowman didn't win is immeasurable. Um, it was just Bowman didn't win, so it, that was horrible. That means the track won't get destroyed. So very yeah. very sad. Hopefully yeah. he we wins all Pocono. Bowman. We are we are all Bowman fans Sunday night. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to think of like storylines with the actual race itself here. I think the most 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 of the storylines was in the open with everyone just crashing. Yeah, the open. Well, reason. Christopher Bell crashed in the All Star race. He spun, he spun, I should say. Um, yeah. And then Bubba spun in the open. Yeah. Air spun, then crashed, and Suarez got involved, and me and uh-huh. Gary were both very sad. Uh huh. That that was bizarre. It was it was really bizarre what happened to Eric because he like he was right with Briscoe and he, he stuck to him like glue, and then he just got whipped around. That was bizarre. I think it all had to do honestly with the track temperature. That that track temperature during the open was insane. Yeah, it was bizarre just because like he was right on Briscoe and he couldn't get off him. He just got whipped around by the air. I guess I don't know. Um, but like yeah, it's like you got single file and that was it, and then you're just like. And to the next restart. Oh, they're side by side because they're full throttle and side drafting. Oh, they're single file. Oh, okay. That's well, that's it, boys. No pass here. No passing here. Um, and then there was let me think here. There was a mandatory pit stop at one point. <laughs> Yep. Chase Elliott's team won that. Very fast pit stop. They uh they were really good there. Um, but like, I can't think of anything out of that race that was actually like noteworthy, other there, than of course, genuinely wasn't. Kyle Larson won. Honestly, honestly, surprisingly, I honestly liked the format just because we knew it was gonna be so bad. That was it. Was like the only attempt attempt way to save the race well so so larson gave an interesting perspective after the race that actually kind of turned me to like the format i just didn't like the actual racing product but like mm-hmm. he mentioned that the the format was kind of wacky and a little bit and like there was some uncertainty uh involved so like it made you still want to make passes even if you were in like 12th place because if you knew if you the more cars or the more spots that you gain the the possibility for of you getting uh the pole in the next round like say you were ninth and that you know then they drew ninth place gets inverted then all of a sudden you're starting on the pole for the next round so he was saying there was always some like incentive to gain positions and to race harder and stuff so yeah i think the package and the track kind of prevented that but i think the format actually could be something decent to try on a different track uh because it's actually not as confusing as i thought it was it looked really confusing and i think fox might might have just explained it really bad but it yeah, honestly I mean, wasn't I, that confusing, and I think it's a pretty decent format to try somewhere else. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't. I sort. I, I. I shockingly kind of liked the format just because it was just. It was so ridiculous. <laughs> it kind of just worked out. But um, my one big issue with this format was there was no qualifying. Because it, it 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 kind of we kind of felt like as soon as we saw Larson was on pole, it was already over before it began, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like if the, but at the same I time, mean, he uh, might have got pole. He might have got pole regardless. But let's say he started yeah. fifth in that race. That changes the entire race if he starts fifth. Maybe. I mean, there's the the field being inverted though. You know that that kind of defeats the purpose after the first stage. That kind of defeat the defeats the purpose of qualifying, honestly, in my opinion. But you just we don't know. So, well, let um, me ask you this, okay? How, how yeah. long until NASCAR inverts the field in points races now? <laughs> oh my god. Um that's the scary thing. That's that, that's the scary I thing. I can see them doing that. I can see coming it. up with gimmicks. I don't want it. I don't want it to be a gimmick in actual races like it's fine in the All-Star race. 
but if this happens in real racing, it could be I, way it, too it, far. It would be a very bad look. It, 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 the jokes of NASCAR being WWE really come to full for fruition if that does happen. Honestly, yeah. Like, they're they're all about entertainment now. No real. Product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's the case, it's not about the products; it's about the entertainment. But like, is it going to I mean, be I bad entertainment? That's what bring, brings them money and makes them survive. But like, the you know that's not racing anymore. It's just gimmicks, and it's. I I would hate. I would I would absolutely hate to see NASCAR go down that road. I mean, maybe it would be you know entertaining, and, and maybe I shouldn't hate on it until I see see them do it. Uh, but would it be good racing? Undoubtedly not. Especially right uh, now, because so. we've seen it. We've seen it so many times. A car can be like in the top three or four. They get like a bad pit stop or something, end up like fifteenth. They're stuck there the rest of the race. Yeah. And it would just seem really bad to do. Um, I, I honestly, I used to not be on the, the train of let's get rid of stage cautions, but I'm kind of on that train now to where we just get rid of them and then you know, keep the stages, but get rid of the stage cautions and yeah, then go I, back I, I to uh, just please go back to higher horsepower. Holy crap. 2014. I don't know why. It's NASCAR not going to happen. Not gonna happen. I know, but I don't know why. Well, you want to, you, you need you know why because we've talked about it. Manufacturers want, like the lower horsepower. Do they actually though? That's that's the thing. It, it means I they mean, don't have to spend as much money on yeah. reliability because it's easier to build an engine with less horsepower. I, yeah, that, that's it, true. It's dumb. It's it's, just, it, it seems I, dumb to us because we know higher horsepower will deliver better racing. NASCAR is choosing co- better costs over a better product. Which in the long Which, run, I mean, you have to it, you have to look at costs, and yes, you have to make sure that short the term, too expensive, but short term, it's awful. Long term, hopefully, it will be the right decision. I mean, maybe maybe instead of looking for ways to to get the cost down, maybe NASCAR should be looking at ways to bring in more money for the teams and stuff like that, and and do it not in a broken way like the charter system. Yeah, well, and and the thing is, is Hopefully we don't have to talk about this much because I think it's 2023, right? New engines, right? Yeah, that's also true. Um, obviously, I don't. Th- I, I I'm thinking. I, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on Reddit about 650. Um, I think that's Heavy pretty middle ground. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take um, that. If it's and, not but tamed. I feel like I've said it. If I think a lot changes if you actually design an engine purposely made for. It, X amount of horsepower. I, I kind of agree with that too because I think they're suffering so much right now because it's still the it's still the high how uh, high horsepower engine just with a tapered yeah. space for it. Yeah, and and so that obviously makes the cars accelerate slower, and that's where we are at now. Yeah, so uh, and, and all that stuff, and they carry less RPM because of it, so they don't have to worry about slowing down in the corners as much. Yeah. Um... It's a never-ending discussion. See, so, yeah, I, I guess that that's another thing that's always just kind of like confused me and, and made no sense to me is they were saying this whole thing is just a test to see how manufacturers like the uh, the the less horsepower and all this stuff. Well, you're not really doing less horsepower; you're just letting less get through to the driver. Yeah, you're, you're building the same size engines. You're just putting a tapered spacer in there to prevent the engine. It's engines a delayed from response, fast. basically. So, like, I don't get how you're getting any kind of feedback from the manufacturers here because you're not building anything different. You're just putting a tool in there to make the to make the car slower. Yeah, so I mean, that's one thing that's always just kind of bothered me, and it's kind of stupid. I mean, what, I like I, I'm not a huge believer in some conspiracy theories in NASCAR, but there's two I believe in. Two like two conspiracy theories I believe in. There was definitely a period of time where they were definitely rigging the Daytona 500 pull sitters. I can get behind that one, yeah. I don't I believe that one still. But continue. I, I I think I I don't think they did it as long as people think they did. But I think there was 
like the Danica one, I think that one was 100% rigged. That was, and uh, the lead to more to that is that uh, <laughs> rest of her career. Um, <laughs> and then the other one is, I, I think it's almost less conspiracy than well-known fact is the taper spacer came in in 2015, right? No idea. That's when, that's when it came in. What manufacturer struggled so much in 2014 with engines? 2014? Yep. Uh, I don't know. Toyota. Uh, they, A lot of people really the final four, though. With that format, does that really make a lot of a difference? How many races did Toyota win in 2014? Uh, uh, man, I don't know how many races Jimmy Johnson Two. In 2014, Toyota won two races. And one was Talladega. I'll let you down on that one a bit. <laughs> I think but that... Uh, I, 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 think, I, think, I think Toyota had a pretty big say... At least influence over putting taper spacers on. Are you sure that they started using taper spacers in 2015? Yeah, it was 2015. 2015, they started using 750. Because I remember they broke so many track records that year because the corner speeds were so high. No memory. <laughs> um... But... But um, so I I remember that there was the restriction. Oh yeah, I guess it was tapered spacers because yeah, yeah there was, there was the restrictions on RPMs that came in in 2015, and I, I, yeah, yeah. I guess it was tapered spacer. You're right. Yeah, so a lot of people believe Toyota had a large part in it. I tend to believe it a little bit too. Um, but I think we can move on to whatever next, unless you have comments um, on that. I want to talk about something still related to the Texas stuff. So, okay. two things. Uh, well, the first one I'm going to touch upon. I'm just going to mention it. There was a big hyped up post race thing that oh, was supposed to happen. God. It was all it was was a drone show. So we're not even going to talk about it. it. Was not meant to be hyped up at all. But before the race, <laughs> this is where oh. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? We have some random, like, apparently the dude's like 70 years old. I don't know. I've never heard of him, never seen him in my life, never heard the song what's in my life. It's not random. You just don't. What's, uh, who, who, what's his name gonna, again? Like, Sammy Hagar. Sammy Hagar. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's 73. Not random, 70. but he's 73. also like... Does he relate to the, the younger fan base NASCAR is trying to attract? No. Exactly. Um, so this random dude comes out, starts playing some music during the pace laps. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. what's going on here? In the grandstands. I'm like, what is going on here? I mean, I'm not fully against it, obviously. I'm not, I, but I like, think playing in the grandstands was really cool. The yeah, idea I of thought, doing that is great. Yeah, I thought it was cool. And honestly, I thought it was a cool to like, it was cool when they started showing the grid and everything and the cars going by. I thought that then it was kind of like a cool, okay, this, this is. This is this is pretty cool, and and I like it. And then it went on for like five minutes until and they then came Mike out Joy of the like, Yeah, and and then as they're going green, Mike Joy has to break in. That they're going green, so it's like yeah, it went on way too long. But it was it was cool for the first like two or three minutes of it while they were showing the, the starting order. Uh, yeah, and then it was like oh okay no you're you're please stop. But like we're here playing a. We're here playing a, a an apparent hit from 1984. Yes, we've moved on four decades. <laughs> like literally, you couldn't find. Okay, so they obviously well, wanted to go, they want they wanted to go for a rock theme, right? Well, I I don't I think it just had to simply do with the fact that it's literally a song about not being able to drive the speed limit, and it's at a NASCAR race where they're yeah. hauling ass. Well, it used to be hauling ass, not necessarily anymore. They're still they're still going very fast. I mean, though. there's hundreds uh, of songs that are in the 2010s that will be talking about going faster than the speed limit. It, yeah, like, it's like, I, I, like here's the thing: we 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 talk. NASCAR is in this weird spot where I think I read somewhere their average fan base is like 
around six years old. 60. Yeah. That's a problem. That's a problem. You want to know? Bringing like a pre-race concert is great. You want to know how you don't? You want to know how you don't bring new fans in? Bringing 73 year old year. Yeah, huh? okay. Columns twice a year. Okay, so uh, two years in a row for the title, 500. Title for this podcast now is NASCAR pre race concerts are terrible. Okay. <laughs> Luke Combs, two years in a row. Don't get me started. Okay. Bringing, I don't care who the artist is. Don't even bring the chain smokers two years in a row. Bringing any artist to the same venue for the same event for two years in a row is stupid. Um, but when you're trying to attract this new fan base, you bring in this country guy and you again. You bring in country music artists. That go towards like, your older fan base. Yeah. What are you and doing? You bring in, especially when it's, Luke Combs is going back to old style country, and it's not even the new style. Well, the all country like. guys are going old style all of a sudden. Well, yeah, that, that's true. But I mean, he was the leader of it and, and kind of made it popular again. Like, what are you doing? So my though? point being, like, they say that they want to do all this stuff. It, it's it's the fact of the matter for me. It's always the same thing with NASCAR. They say they want this and they're gonna do this. But what do they actually do? The exact opposite of that. And it always happens, and it's so frustrating. They're, like, of every Daytona 500 I've ever watched, it's every single year has been a country artist. Pitbull, for the love of God, Pitbull is an owner of a NASCAR team now. Have him perform. That'd be like, kind of hype. Like, seriously. But, like, another thing is with these performances. We're bringing 73-year-old Sammy Hagar. Exactly. Yeah. 73 year old. All right. Like, I know, I get Gary doesn't listen to rock or anything outside of EDM, really. But if you're going to bring a rock band or anything involving rock, bring somebody de- modern, decently new, or like, you know, or at least somebody from the well 2000s. Not, even if you're going to go outside of that, do somebody well known. Like, you, you want to know, try to bring Sh- Jay, do you know who Shinedown is? Yeah. I've heard of them. Bring shine, bring shine down because you want to know why. You know they've been around for a little while, but in the two thousands, they're one of the biggest rock bands in the world in the modern time, I think. And they're very accessible too. That's another thing. Like, if I'm going to tell someone to start listening to rock, I'm going to tell them to listen to shine down because they're very accessible and easy to get into. I, I guess the other part too is right. Is this the the whole performance by him was not really publicized like at all? So like even if you're trying to do that to wow. attract fans to it, which I don't think they were. I think it was just simply a cool thing to do for TV. Yeah. But if that if it was their goal to bring people there to see a performance by Sammy Hagar, which of who the heck is why why would that be your goal in the first place? But if that was your goal, you did a terrible job a publicizing it, and b why would you choose him? Who the heck is going to go, yeah, I want to go sit out in 100 degree heat to hear him play one song that, you know, was popular back in the 80s and then watch a NASCAR race. It's going to be kind of boring. Who wants to spend money for that? So, I mean, again, I don't think that was our goal. But my my point being, if you're going to have somebody come and perform to be exciting and to make people want to watch or go there or whatever, A, publicize it and B, make it somebody relevant. Yeah. You know, do it. Do it, NASCAR. Bring Shine down. They put on a hell of a show. Hell of a show. I say I've just bring someone to, mainstream to a 500. I've been to to countless NASCAR races, and I've I've only been able to actually be there for a previous concert for maybe three or four of them, and <laughs> every single one of them has never had somebody actually rel- relevant. The only the most popular one they've had is Leonard Skinner in Atlanta, and I think that's been two or three times now. But that but that then falls into my thing. You're bringing an old seventy year old Leonard Skinner in into the party. Not even, not even. They're they're the seventh generation of Leonard Skinner because everybody keeps dying in that band. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> I, 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 I mean, uh, all right. Let me let me let me put this. Leonard Skinner was formed in nineteen sixty four, and they've had about twenty <laughs> or so new members since then. Obviously, there was the tragic thing that happened where where they were killed in a plane crash. I think it was a plane crash. Yeah. Uh, And then ever since then, people have just still been interchanging or dying off. Like, yeah, I mean, the last time Leonard Skinner was there, that was like 2014. But still, that's not even 10 years ago. Uh, I I don't remember ever seeing an actual I mean, you can you can say they were relevant for their time or relevant in their genre if they're a country artist. 
but it's not relevant mainstream and it's not what NASCAR wants to do with quote unquote bringing in new I, fans. I, I, I would say like in the eighties they were probably they were probably pretty damn mainstream, but like Oh Leonard Skinner, yeah, they definitely yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, but like but but like probably not in the last twenty years. <laughs> Other than I can you know, another thing too. Sweet home I, Alabama. I'm a, I'm a rock fan, I'm a Leonard Skinner fan. I went to that race and my mom wanted to go see the concert. And I was completely against it. I didn't want to go to it at all. I had no interest in it. I was there to see a NASCAR race. I wasn't there to, to see Leonard Skinner play. Like, uh, why? Why? I, I like, I like, um, I, like, it's not something that needs to happen, but I, I like when they do a concert pre race uh, or a pre sporting event, I should say. I think it just it adds to the hype if it's done right. Um, yeah, kind of like right. if, if, the yeah, Super exactly. Bowl with their halftime, be. right? Like the weekend, in my opinion, was the only enjoyable one I've ever even seen. Like I never watched the Super Bowl, but when there I know the halftime's coming up, I yeah, always yeah, tune in. So there, there, that was a decent the time one. the Super Bowl shows are are good, or Super Bowl halftime shows are good, and at least they bring in relevant artists and and make it something people want to watch. Yeah, NASCAR doesn't do that. They they could do that with the Daytona 500 pre race Absolutely. show. And like, if I they get, publicize I, it and we're like, listen, you you can listen to this concert from this relevant person before the race, and then after we're watching, just stay and watch the race. But no, they're Luke Combs, and they will barely show it on TV. I mean, Luke Combs is what the biggest I mean, like, artist even, right now. Even with the yeah. artists they do get, they don't even show them on TV. So it's kind of like, well, it's, you know, it's like they, they could absolutely hype up a big pre-race concert at Daytona and make it work, but they just they just don't bother they're like i mean they they hype it up a little bit for the nascar I, fan I base i don't even but... think they hype it up that much for the fans going if i recall from the one time i went i don't remember being told like anything like having anything on the website being like he you know this person is performing uh you know before the daytona 500 be sure to get there early to watch it or get your tickets to it or whatever so it's kind of like i don't even think they advertise it themselves to fans going to the race it's kind of stupid it could be something they could re- look at the Indianapolis 500. They had a whole ass EDM festival in the infield. That was the Brickyard. Brought... Well, Indy 500 does some no, type of thing no. too, but Brickyard as well. I they remember, had it for the 500. I they, they did they it for the Brickyard uh, in 2017. Oh, well, because that's way, when they had Elanium, the chain smokers. I think Marshmallow even did it. Either way, my point being, look at Indianapolis. Okay, they, so look at Indianapolis, and they did that. And it brought in a crap ton of people. And then a lot of the people that were there for the concert also said they wound up being inter- interested in the racing as well. So, you know, it's just, a, it's just a thing of, like, promote both, man. You'll attract a lot more people and you'll make more money. And you'll also put on something really cool that people want to watch. Yeah, no, they did a good job. And then I remember the, the year after they went in that, uh, like, they did, like, a country one with Florida Georgia Line. And then it just kind of died off. Um, at the same track, but obviously uh, we are passionate, I guess, about pre-race concerts because we've been ranting for I think fifteen minutes now about it. Yeah, uh, but my God, I mean, just... they got Jeff Gordon DJ twenty four seven that could even bring him. <laughs> <laughs> he won't that even. Be he could, he has be connections iconic. with the chain smokers. He could bring he in the chain smokers to perform Did? with with DJ twenty four seven. Chain smoker, like I get Gary a lot of shit for being a simp for them, but. <laughs> Like the chain soakers would be like it would be the you know, a lot hyper than whatever the it hell. It would they be. Even it do. would honestly be a fucking cool ass pre race concert. They throw I, down. I honestly, yeah, I I give crap. I give Gary crap too for like how much he likes them. But I mean, they they put on pretty badass uh, sets. So I mean, yeah. I think it would be really fucking cool. Please NASCAR, if you're listening, <laughs> bring the chain smokers <laughs> in one year. You won't regret All it. Right. Or someone, someone that's anyone that, that's that, not country, you know, big... anyone that has made a song go popular within the last five years, and by popular I mean like number one on the charts and shit, not just country charts. Sean Mendez, um, although he, yeah, I wouldn't actually bring Sean Mendez. He really doesn't put on a yeah, good no, show. He, yeah, uh, that does not sound like something I'd be hyped for. At well, all, even if I was a fan well it seems like when NASCAR does pre race concert, it's country or rock. Honestly, I think the perfect one it would it would either be uh, hard rock or EDM is is the two genres they they should go with. Yeah, I don't think they'd want to do EDM for, though. For race. I don't think they no, would probably either. not. But it, it's the two that you think of the most that would be like the most hype and bring the most attention. Because if you're there for a race, you want to have something to hype you up as well, and you're not gonna yeah. want to hear like 
Dua Lipa or, or fucking Luke Combs sing his country songs or some crap like that. Like, you know, give me, I give me some crap to get hooked up to. Yeah, it, I mean, there's so many. Like, I think I, it would be so cool if they got Shine Down to do one. And like, I don't know if you know any like Shine Down songs, Jay, but like, pretty sure I do. I just not off the top of my head. Um, something like The Sound of Man. Diamond Eyes. If anyone knows what Diamond Eyes is, imagine they just come out to a concert, a previous concert, and they just start playing Diamond Eyes. That'd be so hype. Do they have a song <laughs> called like Shine a Light? Something. No. Al- no. I know a song from theirs. Second Chance. No, no, I can't remember what it is, but unless uh, You're yeah, thinking no, the I... completely wrong group, I think. <laughs> Burning bright. Oh no That's... no no! I see the album art right here. Oh, Unity, that song. I know that song from them. It was in uh, NASCAR or no NASCAR used it on Race Up one time. I remember that weird weird fact. Hey, Amen. Uh, not a song I would hope they'd play at a NASCAR concert, but <laughs> but uh, I think we can move on now. <laughs> yeah, let's get away from that. Um, yeah. yeah. That was fun. Uh, SRX was on this weekend, by the way. We'll touch on that really quick. We're not going to make this a main thing on the podcast, but we'll definitely touch upon it. So they're at Stafford Speedway, Raceway, whatever you want to call it. and uh, Somewhere in America. The dude, the local guy, Doug Kobe, won. um, Dominated. Yeah, dominated. But anyway, the the, the, the racing, in my opinion, was up, up and down. I, I think, in my opinion, the hype on Twitter and the praising on Twitter was way too much. I didn't, I personally, like, I watched the whole race. I didn't see maybe what other people were seeing. I, I didn't seem to enjoy it as much. I thought the racing was solid, but definitely yeah, there were some points in there where I was like, this is just not good. But at the other points, I was like, this is great at the same time. So, um, but there was, like, that times where they were in a big single file line. No one was passing or anything. But I thought it was overall, it was solid. I wasn't impressed at all, actually, but I was not unimpressed. I was just like, okay, this is pretty cool. But uh, Matt, what did you think of it? Uh, I didn't watch it live because I was busy doing Nitro stuff, but uh, I I, I didn't get to watch it. Um, I thought it was enjoyable. (laughs) It's pretty much as simple as that. It was better than Texas. It's. Are you going to tune in every week? Like uh, I would say it was good Uh, enough to where uh, I think I will try to, to make an attempt to tune into all six races. Um, I I can't. I, I'm I'll never be able to watch them live because of Nitro. But oh yeah, I'll, that's right. I don't. But I'll watch them when I can. Like I have a I have a DVR set on my YouTube TV, so. But no, I, I'll I'll. I mean, it's also just cool to hear all these names, you know. Like, it's cool to hear like Bobby Labonte, Fancy Tony Stewart. <laughs> I'm not Bill gonna Elliot. lie. When I heard those names, it's like this is gonna be just like with some washed up old guys, and it's gonna suck. But I was wrong, so it was pretty good. But um, yeah. overall, I thought it was solid. Like I said, uh, Jay. I mean, what did you think? I know you, we we were watching it together for a little while, so yeah, I only watched the heat races, and I think maybe the first couple of laps of the main race because uh, we started doing our our nitro race. Uh, but at least in the heats, I thought the racing was decent. In in yeah, there was some points even in the heat races where they where they kind of got single file and there wasn't much going on. Uh, but I mean, for the first race of the series, uh, and and them also being an equal cars, I thought that it was a, a better racing product than Texas. I'll, I'll agree with Carl. Oh, hundred percent. Uh, and and still, honestly, it I think it was it, it was a good first showing of the series. Um, I plan to probably watch the rest of the races or at least try to watch the rest of the heats. Uh, and, and so I, I'm honestly just excited to, I'm kind of like Carm. I'm excited to see some of the guys that I used to, used to race in the cup series race again, like Bobby Labonte, Tony Stewart, uh, and then also Bill Elliott. I obviously never watched him race at all, but, uh, it'll be cool to see what he, he's able to do. Um, I saw before we move on from it, uh, the ratings, they were doing pretty decent. It was like 1.3 million viewers or something like that. Uh, yeah. so they had pretty solid uh ratings there. So Montreal, by the way, just to cut in, we're recording this podcast 
uh, during a big game right now in the NHL. There's not much to talk about this week, so we're going to touch upon this. Montreal is 2-0 up against Las Vegas after one period. I cannot believe that. This is this is not a part of the script. Vegas, not part Vegas of the script. Just baiting. They're, they're just baiting. They're like, ah, oh, we'll just let them get their I lead. Forgot. I forgot. I turn. And then I can, destroy their spirits. I can turn that game on in the background, actually, while we do this. Actually, yeah, so can I. I did not expect uh, to see that happen. But... Um, um, I thought I was I, I was like Ve- I, I was I was with the Vegas means Vegas in three. <laughs> How the heck are they up to? I don't. I, it's, um, okay, is, I got it. I got it on my TV now. We're good. Uh, CBC is up. So before we move were, on from, were, oh, go on, go ahead. I was I was gonna say you were talking about the the ratings. I saw somewhere, and I don't actually know if this is true because I just saw someone say it on Twitter. Uh, but apparently SRX and CBS were hoping for and, and trying to get 3 million viewers oh, for God. SRX. Yeah, I heard that. I, I, I heard about that. You're not too. pulling NASCAR holy, numbers. Yeah. Holy crap. Were they overestimating that? Uh, they're they're yeah, getting I mean, like IndyCar viewership, which is They're well, actually fine. better than IndyCar. Honestly, they're, they're a couple hundred thousand yeah. better than IndyCar. Yeah, uh, which, which is, is they're they're actually doing better than what I expected. I didn't expect them to get over a million, and the fact that they did, uh, you know that that surprised me. And I thought that was very good, uh, for them overall. Honestly, ratings for the weekend overall, uh, and and racing were yeah surprising to see, and they were they were all good, especially that yeah. IndyCar race. The second race had over a million viewers, which I don't think aside from the Indy Five Hundred just happened this year. Well, they, they saw someone almost died the day before, so that kind of happens. Um, yeah, that's actually, one way to put it. before we touch on that real quick, NASCAR f- on Fox, I guess they were up three percent total or something this year. Uh, if yeah, I remember, if I remember. Yeah, race, the All Star race was up twelve percent from twenty nineteen. Yeah, I saw that too. It was pretty good. So I I mean, the like... ratings are going up, which is a cool thing to see. Um, fans are if you're a brand new fan tuning in, it's kind of an awkward time. Hopefully, next year is a savior. Um, and with the new engine stuff coming in 2023. But uh, IndyCar, before we get away from like oval racing and stuff, well, IndyCar was on a street course, but uh, they race a few ovals a year. So um, it was uh, Felix Rosenqvist for McLaren. Yep. Stuck throttle, I guess, going into yep. the right-hander at Detroit. Uh, just boom, into the barrier. Nothing you can do. Um yeah, I was gonna say you're near. You could have went or something, but yeah, um, yeah, a huge crash. I don't know what if what kind of injuries he had. I don't. I haven't heard anything. I it's they were kind of quiet about that. Um, so, um, but a big crash for him. I don't know who won. I didn't pay enough attention. I was kind of lost into it. But yeah, so yeah, but that was a scary crash, man. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, thankfully. Uh, really- Thankfully, they, he's a, mainly okay, right? But yeah, yeah. Uh, from what I understand, there's nothing serious, life threatening or anything like that. So, but uh, his replacement this weekend. <laughs> Have you Kevin seen who it is? Magnuson. Yeah, it is Kevin K Mag. <laughs> That's cool for That'll Magnuson. Be, yeah, see how he does. He also won an IMSA. Yeah. At uh, same track, right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was also on Pogue. Grosjean has been doing really strong in IndyCar so far. Um, Jimmy's just going for uh, Sunday drives at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson's been way off, unfortunately, and which is, was expected. I'm surprised people are going after him as hard as they are when we all kind of knew it was going to be like that. Um, but. He's still got one more year, by the way, next year to deal with that. So maybe he'll make a little I bit mean, of progress. But if he doesn't make progress, then there's an issue. But yeah, I mean, I'm I, curious I to see like the end of this year where he'll be. But two laps now. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be interesting. <laughs> but um, hopefully something will work out there, and he can finish like top twenty one of these races. But um, now. We are headed towards, uh, I guess we'll touch on Nitro real quick, and then we have a little bit of F1 news. So What about that uh, other thing? Oh, yeah. Lit- oh, so all I really have to say is door bumper clear. I don't listen to it anymore because Brett Griffin, he blocked me. Um, I stopped listening to it before he blocked me, though. But 
I guess he was saying that there is some silly season news coming likely this weekend at Nashville. And then Chris Knight, a guy, a media guy on Twitter, backed it up saying it's going to be Cup Series news. But it's not going to be news that's surprising. So, but I guess it's not the Kozlowski thing. So, my guess is Kurt Busch is leaving mm. Chip Ganassi Racing. Will he say where uh, he's going? Uh, Unlikely, but I think... Yeah, if he's, like, no, he's going to say it's not going to be surprising, yeah. then it'll just I be him leaving. Kurt. Yeah, I think, that's what, I think that's what it is. Yeah, because... like, Or it could be that 23XI announces their second car. Or Trackhouse. I but, think it would more so be 23XI for... I, I, I would agree. I would agree. Um, I think this was what it was going to be. Um, yeah, it won't be a surprise. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm going to take my bets to be Kurt. Because um, he's been vocal about Silly Season already, so... Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much well, as the season started, he was already talking yeah, about stuff. He was already, he was like teasing retirement and all sorts of weird stuff. But um, I think pretty, he honestly was teasing been... retirement, maybe because CGR doesn't want him back next year, and then he was he was going to retire, but then this opportunity opened up for him. Yeah. But then if Kurt leaves now. That just throws everything in the overdrive. That's gonna that's gonna, the dominoes will start falling quick because probably then, yeah. Because then whatever happens to the one car, Gregson. No. Gregson. The man can't even get in top 10 in the Xfinity points. He's got up. money. He's not ready. The money will get him there. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. I, I, I said well, a shoey. Hey, hey, shoey. I put a shoey I, I, on it. Yeah, and how many have you done of those? There are the, when's, the last, the, when's, the, when's, the, when's your last NASCAR prediction hey. been right? I can't remember, but at the end of the season, I'm going to collectively do all the shoeys in one go. To, yeah, to yeah, be no, fair, I, I'm i kind of more on Gary's side on this one than I am on Karma's side, just because, again, money. I mean, that's what that's what drives teams nowadays, and Noah has that. Yeah, then he's then, tired then, of sticking with, with the and, Xfinity series. And then Chip, Chip Ganassi's going to see the uh, wrecked car damage bill. It's <laughs> already got Ron Chastain. Just, yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> hey, man. Here's the that thing. Team is Chast- gonna be so Here's the like- thing. Here's the thing. Chastain doesn't really wreck his cars. He wrecks other cars. Mm. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. Gregson actually well, turn around and be him getting wrecked. Gre- Gregson, he gonna wreck his own cars and wrecks others. <laughs> but here's the like. Here's the thing. If you're Chip Ganassi, you want to be a com- you want to be more competitive than you are right now. Yeah, but right? the car's not good enough. Well, Gregson ain't gonna help you at all. Nah, man. They need like. Uh... Honestly, I don't know on. if Chip cares about the Cup Series anymore as much as he used to. I think he's full on Imps on IndyCar right now. I think him losing Larson, like, was a, like a huge hit. You know? Oh yeah. So I mean, obviously, like, yeah. who do they got now to be like? Oh, like we got one of the best talents in the sport. Now you ain't never gonna have that for who knows how long now. So. I, I mean, that'd be hard for me to focus on the cup program when he's got the IndyCar thing going on and there's nothing really to look at on his cup side and really push for. But we don't know what yeah. it's going to be. So we'll wait till next week. We or hope I'm sure by next week this time we'll we'll know what it is. So yeah, um, heck, we might find out tomorrow. Very well could. Who knows? Um, uh, Nitro, but I, I, oh. I think it's going to be Kurt, though. So. I, so I think it is. I, I, this, it just feels like it. Um, but Nitro Racing League went to uh, I honestly oh Texas, Texas. Um, I sped, blew a race away. I I don't think you win though. Regard even if you don't speed. Nah, I think I would have won you, you, you if that five. initial pit stop caution didn't screw me over. Um, no. that's that's what kept that's what took me out of it. I I pitted early and tried to really nail it because I was like, if I can get within drafting distance of the two in front of me, I'll I'll run them down no problem, and then we'll be back in the mix. But obviously, I, I blew it away, so that was unfortunate. Uh, how did how did uh, Jay? How did your race go? Went better than usual. Uh, I was actually competitive. Uh, again, which was nice to have that. Um, obviously, I, I felt I was competitive with Watkins Glen, but didn't get to finish. I felt like I I should have gotten. 
uh, Texas, I, I was running decent the entire race. I actually didn't have anything dumb happen this time. Well, no, I did, but it didn't affect my race too much. Uh, and then I, I definitely got a better finish than I probably would have if it wasn't for you obviously speeding on pit road and then Andrew uh, getting into the wall at one point. But finishing, I think it was fourth, uh, best finish of the season so far, first top five of the year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Finally, finally into the playoffs now, so uh, season's trending forward for me, which I'm excited about. Uh, was honestly kind of down about the season a couple of weeks ago, uh, so hopefully I can actually keep this momentum up and, and make my way into the playoffs and stay in the playoffs. Uh, my ultimate goal, obviously, is to get a win this season, but at this point, I don't know if it's going to happen. Matt, how was yours? First, fine. Fine? I finished fifth. Fifth? Okay. Yeah, uh, I like it was. We I was way too tight early, but like after like five laps, I was just as fast as you and even. But by the time that every time I couldn't get a good restart to get stay with you guys, that was so tight never, the whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I made that mistake of not loosening my car up, and then I did right there at the end. And dear God, that helped so much. But um, yeah, P five. It was a pretty t- much tamer race than I thought it was going to be, to say the least. Yeah, it was. It was clean. Which was I, nice. I, 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 I was fully prepared for a shit show. Oh yeah, I was prepared for it to be worse than Atlanta. Yeah, just because um, the way the track is. But honestly, it, it was actually easier to pass uh, there than it was in Atlanta, which is strange. Because there was all throttle time. <laughs> XD. Yeah, true, and and you could actually make the outside work a little bit. Yeah. Um, you wanted to at least what three and four? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Jonathan won. John, yeah, Jonathan won his first race of the season. He'll likely be locked in the playoffs. Should be. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, next now, two, two, the next two to three weeks, we're gonna basically clinch our spots and buy points. Yeah. And that point uh, starts. by starts. Um, and then next week, this week's over. So, oh, oh, god. <laughs> Should be an interesting one. Yeah, fuel saving time. No, no, no. just a looseness. Oh, wait, did, no, you, did you adjust car. it this time loose around car. to not have that happen? It's not in game stages. Loose car. Oh about. yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, no. well, it still could be fuel saving though. I, uh, let me let me put it this way. Do you think you're saving 15 laps in the first two stages? I don't think so. There was I can't remember can exactly 30, the amounts. You of can the go lap. like 30. You can go like 35 laps, right? I can't remember the exact amounts of what it was last time we were there, but all I know is it was some Every weird, stage. wacky fuel stuff. Yeah, don't worry about it. The only okay. way it's going to happen is if the caution falls in, falls at okay. like that point. Well, hopefully we don't have that. But yeah, there's also the loose problem. Preset one's not not low yeah, enough. That's all we can do. <laughs> um, uh, George Russell. Oh, F one, F one, F one, F one. Um, George Russell. F1. Uh, you know what? We're doing a good job here on time. We're almost at an hour already. Um, I know. We had to rent five concerts for 30 minutes. George Russell, big rumor um, that some the Italian like side of Sky Sports is saying that uh, Russell to Mercedes is a done deal. And Bodice has already been like basically informed that he is out at the end of the season. Woo-hoo. We already knew that was coming. And then Ocon... Got uh, re-signed with Alpine until 2024, Years. which pretty much guarantees Russell to Mercedes. Pretty much, I think we can yeah. all agree. Yep. So, so did you did you hear the other side of the Botas rumor where he's going? No, to, actually, I, I've heard. Uh, I've heard. It, and it, it, I've heard. I, I heard it's Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo, and his teammate will be Kimi Raikkonen. So, what happens to Giovinazzi? Rip. <laughs> I mean, Gio's bad, so... No, he's not. No, I disagree. I, I, I don't think... I, I disagree, too. I think if um, you put Gio Venazzi, I think Gio Venazzi is right on the level that Bottas is on. So, yeah, I don't okay, think... I don't think Alfa Romeo is really taking a loss, but I think that it's a waste to put a guy that's had all these years in that car over Gio Venazzi, who's still getting his career underway and has been showing promising progress you know? Honestly, the person I feel wor- the worst about this Ocon deal actually getting signed through is actually uh, Gasly. Um, 
Because eh. where is he gonna go? Yeah, it's he's in a weird spot. He still seems to want to be on Red Bull. It's never gonna happen. No, but um, it, it's interesting. He's gotta like try and get out of that program, but now he who knows? I mean, Raikkonen could retire still. We don't know. Unlikely, right? But at this point, it seems unlikely. He might go for another decade still, so we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. I I love Raikkonen, but honestly, he needs to retire. Las Vegas just dinged just... one right off the post, by the way, in a breakaway. Yeah, I was watching. <laughs> I was trying not to be so focused on that. I wasn't talking. <laughs> I I thought that was in when they yeah, shot. So did I. I was like, oh, what a beauty! But no. Nope. Um. But uh, F one, by the way, they go to France this weekend. Not really looking forward to the race there. Not a great race usually, but uh, no. We'll give I, our I predictions like later. The meme. Have you seen the meme where like, man, some guy broke into my car and he left two extra French. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> it's terrible. I did um, see that. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Are we? I guess we are into E3 then. Uh, I guess we're we're doing predictions later or no? Yeah, we're doing those right at the end. Actually, well, you know what? Some people might tune out at this part. So yeah. let's do the predictions guess- right now. Yeah. So NASCAR's at Nashville. We're on the low downforce, higher horsepower package. New I track. honestly, I mean, it's hard to go against Kyle Larson right now, but I'm going to say Martin, Danny Hamlin is who I'm going with. Martin Truex Jr. Matt, you got one. Kyle Larson goes for You're going three in a row. Okay. Yeah. My fantasy, my my fantasy lineup is literally all four Hendrick drivers. <laughs> I think this is like, this is the package that kind of will, hopefully, I think, take their advantage away a little bit, so, not like fully, but a little bit. So actually, I mean, Dover. I, Let's so not talk about Dover. you want. All right, all right. I guess what Jay make your prediction real quick. I already did. Hang on. Okay. Um. A little rumor floating around is somehow is Hendrick has found more horsepower. Yeah, we talked about that last week, remember? Yeah, I don't remember last week. I don't even remember three days ago, really. Uh, yeah, but, no, we talked about it. But, but, but I think after the All-Star race, it was much more evident that's what's going on. Yeah, it's definitely what it seemed like, yeah. And in this package, that's what matters. You're full throttle, man. Like it doesn't matter if your car is handling better, going through the turns better, if you can't beat them on the straightaways. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, I guess yeah. when your full throttles through a corner, it helps even more. Yeah, um, so I, was, I it honestly Nashville might be. I would say Nashville Nashville might be a little weaker for them. They might show a little more vulnerability thing is is you say that but we go back to dover arguably their most dominant race where they finished one two three four a lot of uh, banking those, a lot of problems. yeah and those guys as well all of those guys are really good there yeah so and we're going to a track we've never been to in the cup series and also just doing some laughs and for practice oh. <laughs> sorry oh? keep going oh, vegas oh, scored oh. <laughs> okay um <laughs> spoilers spoilers scream it over here um there's a lot of off-throttle time here, so maybe there will be a little more weakness in the Hender camp if it is horsepower. But what? I mean, having having more horsepower is always nice, right? And Gary, uh, they did not score. Holy crap! That was just a wow. Um, Gary, I agree, Gary's though. Not I know I do agree. I was listening. I was just like, wow. But um, I expect Hendrick to win still, but who knows? Yeah, so I, it's, always, it's exciting to go to a new track regardless. So, yeah, I, I no matter what, even if Hendrick dominates, I'm honestly thinking this will put on a the Nashville will put on a pretty decent race. I hope I don't wind up being extremely wrong, but I, I have a feeling it'll be it'll be a good race. Uh, what about F1? What do you guys got? I'm gonna go with Verstappen this weekend. Who France, France, France. I mean, I, I think the Mercedes right now is truly better than... Or not Mercedes, sorry. I think the Red Bull is truly better than Mercedes, so I'll go with Verstappen as well. 
I'm just thinking. See, this is the weird thing. It's the weird thing because I guess I, I feel like it's track dependent, right? And you're just kind of basic guessing on what track it's gonna who's gonna be better where at this point, right? Yeah. I have I have a feeling that Hamilton will, will win this week. Okay. I don't know. Ligas or Bejan, France is still another one of those fast tracks. But here's and the it's... thing. Here's the thing. A lot of the turns are very slow. Uh, so were the ones in Azerbaijan. France, no. France has got faster turns. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, they struggled with rear grip because the slow turns, right? But it's also weird because Mercedes was so good in sector three at Spain, which is all slow turns. So it, it's really weird, right? Do I think the Red Bull is better? Yes, but it's also Lewis well, Hamilton. <laughs> Mercedes needs to be on it this weekend because they got the Austria double header coming up. And Red Bull, like, yeah. even when they're yeah. behind, yeah. yeah, even when they were behind Mercedes, it's like Red Bull still knows what they're doing there. And then Silver Silverstone, I honestly think it's going to be Red Bull just because they might run into the same issues they did there last season. I think I think um, these next four weeks are going to be very, very important for both of those teams to really determine. It's a triple, it's a triple, it's a triple header week, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because you got Frank yes. and then sprayed into two Austrias. This is going to be very important. <laughs> I think, yeah, this, right now this will be the most important stretch of the year. So yep. to give us an idea of what the heck is going to be leading up to the final stretch. So it, it'll be interesting. Um, yeah, Verstappen's what I think. I think it'll be closer, though, this weekend. But it'll be still, nonetheless, an interesting one to watch just between Hamilton and Verstappen. Hopefully Vettel has a nice run again these three weeks in a row. That'd be cool. Um, but E3 is what we're going to oh, transition into now. Unfortunately, I was, like, working through all of the announcements, so I didn't get to, like, watch anything live. Me and Jay watched Square Enix's thing together, and that was lame as crap, by the way. They yeah, you, went you and showed the E3, Star Wars would, game or something, or Marvel would, game. No, Marvel. A couple of Marvel games. Uh, you say E3, I would say more specifically the Xbox showcase, because I didn't see anything else, uh, and, and apparently all the other showcases were... Bad. Aside okay, from Nintendo, so I I'd say Nintendo was. Here's the thing. If there was anything better, if if E3 was better overall, Nintendo's would look a lot worse than it did. Nintendo was decent at best, and then Xbox was good. Um, Ubisoft was terrible. Didn't even know they did anything. Well, yeah, when, first, when, when, I think, or not first, but first of the weekend. Of the... Yeah, they were one of the first, but uh, like when they were like, when you spend fifteen minutes talking about Rocksmith and Just Dance, there's an issue. They announced another Rocksmith. Yeah, Rocksmith Plus. What the and they heck? spent like ten minutes talking about it. I'm just like, huh? Um. Yeah, when when uh, when Gary and I watched um, Square Enix. They spent like 15, 20 minutes on this one Marvel game and the gameplay for it. It looked, looked worse so and worse bad. as it went on. There was frame yeah. rate oh drops. My gosh. And and then, stuff. Yeah, and then every single time they shot in the freaking beta, they're showing to show off the game. Every time you would shoot, it would go to like 10 FPS. Yeah, it was. It was it, overall, this E3 was not very can, good. Oh, it was can not we good. agree Xbox here was, that we really, next year, Please, somehow, we need a physical E3 back. I think they will next year. I, I, I'm getting a little worried that E3 is just going to go away. At this I, point. Think, okay. I think next year is going to be the deciding factor of what happens to E3. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. If they go back to this big in-person physical convention, I think we're going to be okay. But mm -hmm. if not, I think it's it's pretty much going to be written off. But oh man, I just think back to 2019 E3 and 2018 when they did this that massive thing with Fortnite that year. Um, it was it, E3 was so cool, and watching the IGN live stream would like watch it all day long. It was great, and then this time yeah. it was so it felt so just not right, and like it was mm -hmm. a letdown overall. Um, other than, of course, like the Xbox kind of being like the high point. Especially yeah. when you have Razer taking up a half hour block and all they do is show a Zoom meeting. Yeah, like that take was two. That too. 
take yes, yeah. take two to that as well. Or not not razor. Sorry, yeah, take two. Not not razor. And then apology. and then you had Gearbox too, and it was mostly about the freaking board them interviewing people from the Borderlands movie. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing is, you want something? Gearbox literally announced a new game at E3. And then their and then their their thirty minute block. They spent twenty minutes talking about the damn movie. So, Xbox carried on as usual and did the aside from the world premiere thing. They carried on as usual and did the same thing they did, and I think that's why once again they were the best showcase there because game game in game, normal, game, game. In normal E three Xbox is one of the better presentations, and then they kept it as normal, and a lot of others changed up the way they did it, and it just it was terrible. Xbox went through and did their quick things where they showed a trailer. They mentioned the game. They maybe had somebody talk, come uh, come out and talk for a couple of them for a minute or two, yeah. show off a little bit of gameplay of Horizon like they always do when they announce that, and then that was it. It was just they revealed so much crap in their hour or hour so, and a half time block, whatever it was, so, and, and just kept going, just kept free-flowing and didn't spend all this time talking yeah, so about Yeah, so let's, let's so. get into the quick stats of this. Um, they showed 30 games in 90 minutes. 27 of those games are going to be are already on Game Pass. 27 Which, I mean, of them. Game Pass, by the way, Xbox. It's doing getting a better and better. Fantastic it, it, job with it, that. I was like, I did like the, I, I had like the three months for a dollar thing, but now like yeah. at this point I'm sold with what's coming. Like, oh I'm yeah, sold. like I, I don't know how at this point you can buy or you, you can have an Xbox subscription and not have Game Pass. Like it is, it is way too worth it at this point. Yeah, because you're you're essentially paying for with Ultimate. You're essentially paying for three or four games a year, and then you get like fifteen of them that you're probably going to play over and over again for free. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more than fifteen, but I can guarantee you there's probably at least fifteen that, that every person like you will be have, interested in. Like you have to think of so it, much diversity. Yeah, over there. so you got to think of it like this way too. So it's 180 bucks for an entire for Game Pass Ultimate. All right, you can take sixty of that out because that's Xbox Live. So basically, you're essentially paying $120 a year for this Game Pass. That's two full games. If you play through two full games, you break even. Exactly. And and now you get EA Play with it, so you get all those EA games, and eventually after three or four months, you get the brand new like Madden, NHL 21, yeah. FIFA. You get that stuff three or four months after release on EA Play, <laughs> and, and you also get some free perks every now and then, like a free Spotify subscription. They have a free disc or not Discord. They have a free um, uh, Disney Plus subscription right now for a month. You you get all these other extra perks with it too. It's like I, I don't know how you could not have it at this point. Xbox has done an absolutely fantastic job with Game Pass, and it's kind of ridiculous how well they've done with it. And and like I, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, like before we dive into the E3, not E3, uh, Xbox deeper to and what do they actually showed? And I just wanna. Shout out Gearbox for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands because I'm a huge Borderlands fan, and they're doing some Borderlands spinoff, and it looks the idea of it seems really cool, and I'm really hyped for it. So, Yay me. Um, I think. We, do we go back? So do we go into Xbox? Then? I guess before we dive into Xbox, just um, one thing from each of you. That like stood out that you're like looking forward to the most for me. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I've been I was just looking forward to Starfield news all week. Um, we only got a very very tiny bit of it, but uh, we at least got a release date that's really far out and doesn't seem like it's going to be rushed. Thank God. Um, so I was happy to see some Starfield news. I mean, Jay, what what uh, was there anything there that stood out to you that hyped you up a little bit? Oh, the contraband, contraband that immediately cool. stood out to me. And and obviously they didn't show like anything actually about the game. Uh, they just gave a little bit of a teaser, kind of like the idea of what it is. Uh, and that alone was enough to get me hyped up for it and excited for it because it, it seems like a cool idea. And it's made by the people who made uh, Just Cause, which is just a game for you to get around and, and mess around on and, and, you know, parachute out of random places and, and steal all these, you know, like it's basically like GTA, but on an island and then with all these crazy physics and stuff. Uh, so like it, it, it's... That was a really, really fun game. Both of those games are really fun. Uh, so I'm excited that it's going to be made by those people. And then, like, the concept of it, of a, a smuggling game where you're essentially running, a, I, I assume you're running, like, a criminal empire 
uh, and and you're you're smuggling, I guess, either drugs or or maybe you find some kind of gold. Some illegal you, you stuff. Know, yeah, some something illegal. You're smuggling some type of illegal goods that make you a lot of money, and it looks like you set up heist to steal the stuff, and all that kind of and all that kind of stuff. So it looks really cool, and I am very excited for that. I will have to say, I'm also I wasn't really excited for Starfield before. Uh, it didn't seem like I, I didn't know much about it as well, but uh, just from that little teaser they showed, and then from also some stuff that was revealed on Twitter about it, like how heavy RPG it's going to be and all that kind of stuff. I'm actually pretty excited for Starfield now too. Uh, personally, I don't really care for space games, so like my hype bar isn't extremely high for it. But it's like uh, as a Bethesda single player game fan, I'm looking forward to it to see what they can come up with still. But Matt, uh, what did uh, anything stand out to you from E3 that hyped you up a lot or? Well, uh, the Wonderlands, just because I'm a Borderlands fanboy. But uh, what else is there from the Xbox? Um, I mean, honestly, like, there, Contraband, I get the most, but it was a lot. Was the, uh, uh, Back for Blood. It's Left for Dead 3, guys. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, uh, let me think here. Um, I, I'm also personally excited for Age of Empires 4. I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd yeah. when it comes to games like that, and I'm extremely yeah. excited yeah. for that game. Yeah. Xbox had a lot of good stuff, but uh, so yeah, there's Wonderlands, Age, Age of Empires. That'll be fun. Halo. Um, that game they ended their press conference off looks interesting. The, like the Vampire Ball. Hunting game? Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that game looks pretty cool, too. Um, that looks cool. But uh, prob- it's hard to say Back for Blood like my most hyped thing because it's been known the game's been known for like a year and like we've seen gameplay of it already and stuff. But like I'm hyped for that. Um, I'm honestly like because I have a Switch, right? I have a Nintendo Switch, so obviously I was paying attention to what Nintendo is doing, and I was kind of disappointed. There was not much to be hyped about for me because like i don't play zelda games then i show some the new zelda game but like i'm waiting for mario kart 9 and i'm actually starting to believe this is never going to happen on the switch but uh i'm ha- i'm excited for mario golf what comes out in like nine days <laughs> but yeah that's about it there, so there, once we go to the E3 for uh, Xbox, that's when I'll go in more detail of a lot of stuff, I think. Um, that's where all the is. We, we'll dive into stuff. Xbox right now, actually. So yeah, I, I think the the main thing I saw like on social media was Forza Horizon 5. And, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of that series, personally. It just gets re- really repetitive really quick. So I'm, I, I bought, like, 1, 2, 3... And I played them for about the same length. I didn't buy their, I didn't buy four, and I'm not even gonna think about buying five. But I mean, what well, do you guys think about it? I do have Game Pass, but like, I I have zero interest in even trying it for free. Okay. Wow. I think it's cool. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just like, I got so I think- burnt out after like literally five days on each game. I was just like, I'm not even gonna bother anymore. Yeah, I I got to be that same way as well. I got to where the I, games are, yeah, really boring to me, but. I'm still gonna. I still try it. I've tried every single one, and I've played them for at least a week or so. I'll probably do the same thing with this one. I mean, the graphics alone looks on it great. Really make me excited to try it. It looks, yeah, it looks incredible. Good. All right, all right, all right, all right. So my friend, because me, Gail, and some other people were, and my one friend were like all in the in the Discord call watching it together. And my friend was like, "Do you notice when they ever show a Forza game, it's never about the gameplay; it's about the visuals." I was like. Holy shit, you're right. That's kind of what Horizon has become. It's literally just get on there, make your car, tune your car to however you want it, and just enjoy it. But even the, the motorsports games. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's no, I true. agree. Like, honestly, it's just like they came more about the visuals than the ga- damn gameplay. I mean, Horizon, there's not much you can do gameplay wise. And yeah, but the other game there is okay. uh, with Forza Motorsport, and honestly, I used to be like down to play Forza Motorsport. I never really liked the the kind of arcade style of it. But with yeah. this last one with with seven, undrivable. Awful. I hate it. 
I bought it and, and played it once or twice to try and that was, uh, do a, a yeah. league on it, and nope, never touched it again. That was the yeah. first yeah. legitimate Forza uh, Motorsport I ever played, and I touched it for like a week, and I was just like, I cannot stand this, so I'm never going to go back yeah. to a Motorsport ever again. Yeah. Um, I'll probably play I mean, I have Game Pass. I'll probably download it just to play it for a bit, but it's not. Gonna, yeah. it's most likely not going to be a mainstay for me. Um, I think it'd probably be best because I, I actually have the YouTube video of the press conference up, so we can probably just go like through it of things. So like, they, I they missed a lot like, of it. So yeah, this would be good. Yeah. So um, they opened up with Starfield, the Starfield stuff. Um, they really didn't show anything. Like it was just they confirmed a new game engine. But to, but to me, I I haven't really played this uh, single player role playing games. I don't really play a lot of role playing games. Engines have so been we... their issue with Bethesda. I can tell you that. Yes. Um, well, so this yeah, because is... I'll get into I'll get into or I want to because they they talk about Fallout seventy six later in this press conference. Oh yes, and it felt so out of place when they showed like a teaser for like their like next like season event, whatever you want to call it. Because it looks so bad compared to everything else. But compared to what Fallout seventy six used to be, it looks so good. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking like graphically. Like it's so out of it's, place. It's oh yeah, the, their, their graphics are bad. Yeah, I think on like it's kind of like when you get into the realm of Bethesda, you get used to it. Like for me, those graphics are fine. Um, and like their new engine, honestly. Just off the teaser, Starfield definitely didn't still look graphically focused, because no, I could tell all. immediately when I'm like, yeah, these graphics aren't still top notch. But to me, they always do a good enough job with the storyline and stuff with their single player games and the mm -hmm. game mechanics that it makes up for it. So, um, yeah. it should be okay. But yeah, my thing with Starfield is they didn't show any gameplay or anything. They basically showed us a teaser trailer, which showed us I to guarantee me. they won't show any gameplay till next year. I think. I, I agree, but what I'm saying is they didn't show anything for me to give honestly two shits about it. Yeah, I yeah. wasn't excited based off of that trailer at all either, and then I yeah. and then I saw some tweets about it and the type of game it's going to be and like the elements it's going to have and stuff. That's that's when it got me excited. But like, yeah. I'm going to wait to see gameplay and stuff to, before I'm going to say I want to play the game or try it or whatever. As long as um, it's not some extremely fantasy space game, which it doesn't seem like it's yeah. going to be. Um it still seems like they're going to keep it in a semi-realistic space. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I don't like those space games that go really fantasy kind of style. Yep. Um, and then the next thing they showed was Stalker 2. Um, that looked interesting. From the it looks like not a game. So I might try it. But like, it, like, it, I, like like there's that thought of you like man in i guess i gotta try it right? for me that that game kind of felt like a, a knockoff fallout and i already don't really like fallout that much so I'm, i don't think i'm gonna try it at all i think it's a linear story though is what stalker kind of is so yeah but it still looks like it had elements and and the type of game uh, mm -hmm. As well, I I honestly have no interest in nuclear meltdown type yeah. games. So I mean, it looks somewhat interesting. Might try it out. But, Although uh, I will say it was based on Chernobyl, so it it is somewhat realistic. Yeah. Uh, a nuclear meltdown. My my one my one I'm my one issue is if the, my one issue with the game is going to be if the entire game's in Russian, it's going to be really annoying. Yeah, I I, know, <laughs> I got annoyed with it in the trailer already. Having yeah, a I was like, oh man. Going on. I'm like, oh man. But uh let's get into my baby, which was the next was Back for Blood, baby. Oh, this is gonna be this, this, this if this if this sucks, I'll be shocked. I have a hard time believing this. I have I have a hard time believing this game is anything but good or great. Right? Not gonna have much discussion on that one from neither from neither me or Gary, because I don't have any interest in the game either. Yeah, that's, that's another one. It's one of those games I look at. I'm like, uh. Probably new. Have you played Left 4 Dead? No. I played one of them, and it was on the 360. So it's been a while, and I didn't like it very much. But again, I'm also not a fan of zombie games as well. So. 
Okay. I'm well, interested in Dying but... Light, too. <laughs> That's like the only zombie game that piques my interest. Well, Left 4 Dead 2 is a completely different different experience on PC where you can mod literally everything and do really funny shit. But uh, I'm I'm super hyped for it. It's Game Pass too, so that's like even better for me. I don't have to buy the damn game. Um, then after that, they did the CFEs thing with. I am very excited for that. I, is I really want to try on Game Pass. It is, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, you can have it, a good time like... with some friends on there. Yeah, that's what I've heard. The game is a lot better than it was on than release. Cause I, it is. I, yeah. I heard. I heard the shit about release. And when it nice. was, it was a. It, it was like Horizon. It got very boring very fast. It was the ship, go find treasure, get back on your ship. That's yeah, all so it nice. was. Uh, and and it got to one of my most memorable moments on that game is I think it was just me and Gary. It might have been one other person as well. Uh, we just got on our big ass ship and we just started hunting down people and we found. Yeah. It. <laughs> On a ship, we ran up behind it, just rammed into it, and sunk their ship, and it was hilarious. But, but the Pirates of the Caribbean thing, pretty. I, I, I'll probably if you if you guys want to play it, I'll I'll download it because I like. I'm 100 playing it. Pir- Pirates one is one of my favorite movies ever. So yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent playing it. The first the first two pirate movies, amazing. And yeah, I think they features. actually got Johnny Depp to voice his character as well. I know, so if is, they did, oh, which is bizarre. God, thank you. Which is honestly it, bizarre. It, it, is, it is bizarre. Yeah, I agree. It is bizarre, but thank God they did that. Yeah, um, it is bizarre that they were like, "You can't be in the movies, but you can voice your character in a game thing we're doing here." Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, personally, I think uh, he's. he's oh definitely, my goodness! I yeah. Let's let's not Something get into that. Back. Montreal yeah. scored again. Wait, what? Three nothing no. Montreal. What the f- fuck? But uh, yeah. So that that was super hype with the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. So um, there was a couple small things that got announced that I'm excited for as well. Yeah, I don't remember if you're getting close to that or not. Uh, the next thing was Battlefield. Okay, yeah, that that trailer looked cool. That that uh, gameplay for it looked really cool. Yeah, it looked. Looks like cool. Cool Battlefield might have to get into Battlefield again, but not on Game Pass. I haven't played Except. Battlefield in years. Yeah, Wait, so is I, it not on Game Pass? No, not, I'll be honest. That that'll keep me away from it. <laughs> yeah, it probably will for me as well. I don't um, think I don't think I'll like it enough to want to spend money on it. Yeah, yeah, no. If it like if it's on beta. Game Pass, I'd get it for sure. There will be an open beta for the game, so at least there's that. Um, if I like it enough maybe buy it or maybe enough friends buy it too so um i'm sure there's to be some good fun um then they showed some like indie game stuff that didn't really show psychonauts 2 i know a lot of people are excited for that um i'm not sure what to think of it <laughs> yeah i never had an interest in psychonauts so yeah it's, um it's a game it's a game it's on game pass so will be both both new Doom games are in Game Pass. Highly recommend. Those ones are too. Um, I've I've never really okay. gotten into Doom. They're like too. I don't know. I wouldn't say gory because I don't mind gore, but it's just not my my like style of game, basically. Um, you play it for the gameplay. You don't play it for a story. I think that's where. I like it yeah, loses me. Also, Gary, also Gary uh, it the entire soundtrack's metal. So, <laughs> oh yeah, that'll that'll keep me right away. I'm good. <laughs> they can keep it, even though Doom Eternal is probably one of the uh, arguably one of the best games ever. So, oh, Vegas but, just scored by the way. But oh, three one. Man, you're yeah, like a minute then, and a half ahead of me. <laughs> but uh, then they showed, then they showed the Fallout seventy six stuff. Then Elder Scrolls. I, I I don't like Fallout, like I said, but that update, at least the Brotherhood part, that actually looked kind of cool to me. Yep. And then um, I know, I mean, I know Jay was talking about this next one in um, in uh, Discord when it happened. Is a uh, party animal. <laughs> yeah, that game's gonna be lit. See, see, the problem is with it. Like, I want to play it. It's gonna be on Game Pass, so yeah, it's gonna be easy to play and stuff. It looks fun, 
But this is this has got like Fall Guys written all over it. It'll be fun. Oh yeah, for a it bit. does. It does. Yes, it, it'll, it'll be fun for a week or two. But I mean, I'm gonna get a lot of enjoyment out of it for that week. I think because it yeah, looks yeah. just silly and stupid, and I'm here for it. Yeah, I, it looks silly and stupid, and that's all I need to know. Exactly. <laughs> um, Hades is coming to Xbox and the Game Pass. That... I've heard. I don't know about that game, but I've, I uh, on a podcast I listen to, I hear really good things about that. Hey, dude. Everyone that plays it says it's amazing. So. I'll be interested in playing it. Um, my one friend says it's an amazing game too. So, and it won so many Game of the Year awards, and it's an indie game. So, like, I'm curious to see what it's got to offer. Um, and then some more, uh, another indie game, and then they got into Halo. I don't know how you guys feel about Halo. I'm um, gonna play it. I've game. only ever played Halo Reach. Oh, I played like pirated ones at school and stuff. <laughs> like, and... like the game you could download where you, yes. were, where you were just playing? Yeah. I, one yeah. of those old ones. Um, and yeah. we'd, we all go into our own server and we'd just like play for like an hour. I remember playing that um, too, yeah. And then the game club got taken down when they found out and stuff that it was pirated and all that type of crap. But uh, I I would, Halo's like uh, the one time where I'm like, I'd be down just for an online perspective of that game like i think i'd have a fun time with well, it honestly for me i i enjoyed i'm i'm gonna get ripped apart for my opinion on this but it's the only one i've ever played so don't rip me apart and i was also like 12 when it came out so I, you know i enjoyed the halo reach story and that's the only one i've ever played and i i did not like it for the multiplayer i liked it for the story of that game and i was absolutely addicted to playing the story to finding out what happened in the story and crap um I didn't like the multiplayer that much, which is, I, I think, the exact opposite of opinion of just about every Halo player. They don't play Halo for the, the story. They play it for the multiplayer because everybody says it's, it's insane. I didn't really find it to be that great. Uh, I play it for both. But let me... When Halo Reach came out, I played through the campaign once. I did not like it. And then the, then the Master Chief Collection came out on PC, and then me and my friends played through it again. I enjoyed the Reach campaign so much more. I think the Reach campaign, the older you are, the better it is. I enjoyed the heck out of it when I played it. I, I remember yeah. absolutely, like, but obviously me, the soundtrack made peanut, it better, but I remember specifically... Do what? Peanut, me, me with peanut-sized brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like... I still love playing through the original Halo trilogy, so... I just... I I absolutely just enjoyed the crap out of that game with the amount of, like, AI there were fighting each other, and it looked like huge battles and, and all that kind of stuff. It was... I enjoyed the absolute crap out of that campaign, and I, I, I think I'm... Until you just mentioned you like the campaign, I think I've never heard anyone before say they actually like the Halo Reach campaign. I, I've heard nothing but, like, that's that's the worst one that uh, worst one they've done. Uh, ooh, where do I rank it between the first and the first three? It still might be the worst campaign, but I still enjoy it. Like, like it might be like putting worst as in the quotation marks. Worst, yeah, like so. it's not better than the other, but it doesn't mean that it's terrible. I, I get what yeah, you mean. Yeah, no, I I enjoyed it the. the when I played it like a year and a half ago when the MCC came out on uh, Xbox, not a uh, PC. I enjoyed it a lot more. Um, uh, so, and then obviously hey, it's going to be on Game Pass, so you know. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you, you're going to play it, right? <laughs> like, Probably, you yeah. And then, and then the multiplayer is free to play. That's awesome. That's Smart great. Move. Amazing move. Honestly, then, if they do what what everybody, well, not necessarily everybody, if they do what some of the popular streamers and stuff are calling for and putting a battle royale in it, I'm trying it. I don't think I'd play the right. battle royale. I, I at least would try it. it. It's a weird, it's a weird thing where you think of like the big three shooters of Halo, Battlefield, and Call of Duty, right? And the only one with a battle royale. Is Call of Duty, and it's very successful and very good. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big battle royale guy anymore. Um, I, I I got into battle royale when PUBG was in its heyday. I think we all had our like 
battle royale phase um yeah, uh, like i got into it with PUBG, fortnite uh there was one uh yeah uh, cuisine royale there was uh, another one where you could play as like apex animals legends. or something um apex legends apex legends thing. yeah um there was a bunch of and then of course warzone so there was a bunch of yeah. battle royales there and then like i as well as well just kind of over the last like year and a half two years just faded out of the battle royale stuff yeah because this is like I, I I I don't get the appeal. Like, I'd rather play normal multiplayer COD than I mean, Warzone. So would I. Exactly. Exactly. And like I don't know if you saw me too. He's like, man, tomorrow's gonna be like the first day I played Black Cold War in like two months. Um. But uh, because the new season comes out and they're adding like hijack from Bo2 and stuff, so that's pretty hype. Oh really? I remember that one. Yep. And then they're adding another Bo2 DLC. A DLC map from BO2 later in the season. And then they also added Standoff last season, but I never played last season. So I'll have fun tomorrow. And then they're adding a new zombie map later in the season, and I'm so hyped because it's been like five fucking months. Where you doing a part of your game and you're not and you're neglecting it. Kind of. Have they even announced a new COD? No, so they're so you do you know how they announced Cold War? Uh, maybe it was in Warzone. There was oh, okay. an in game event in Warzone. Yeah, I remember that. that. They keep doing that every year. They're, they're gonna call these later. So I wrestled from it and. From the rumors, it's a World War Two game, again. No, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. It's also Sledgehammer Games, which is already like a red flag. Because <laughs> uh, Sledgehammer Games, Call of Duties, Advanced Warfare, and World War Two. <laughs> Both were flops. <sighs> um. What other uh what other games did we have from the Xbox showcase after Halo? Uh, Slime Ranger Two. Slime Ranger Two. Right, that's am, a fun game I'm for a couple for hours. Yeah. Yeah. You can um, put in a couple hours here and there and have a good time. Diablo Two Remake. Um, they showed Far Cry Six. I'm interested to see that one. Uh, I've never like played a Far Cry game, but I always yeah, have I mean, an interest in like checking them out, but just but never actually did. Passed. Oh well, well, then I'm not gonna bother. Yeah, the only one they I ever played like... was Far Cry Four, and I have not wanted to play a Far Cry since. Um. Then they show that snowboarding game called Shredders. Yeah. That one looked okay, but I don't. I don't know if I'll play it. Game Pass. So you got a reason to try it out at least. And then they had that Atomic Heart game, which looked like some. I that that game looks bizarre. Uh, my one friend says it's supposed to be something like Bioshock, kind of. Which is okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is a good series. They announced that uh, new update for uh, Grounded, which yeah, I liked the look of the update because uh, there was like some sitting you could get pets. Uh, there was a couple other things I can't remember, and then at the very end of it, they showed a new spider, and I noped out of that. I I, <laughs> I think grounded is a game that we should play more that we just never do. Like we yeah, played I, it I one like night the and had a game great and time. I like the game. Yeah, and then but like the bugs terrified me. It is scary. <laughs> I remember seeing that like it wolf is spider. It's actually terrifying. That wolf spider, spider like oh god, dude. I think yeah. That's the one game though like we got to get back on though and try cuz it's it's cool like the whole base building thing is really cool. Um it's yeah, a fun time. Really, really it's a fun the, the time with the boys, basically. You want to you be a fun game with the boys that's on Game Pass? Worms WMD. The heck is that? What is that? Have you have you ever played a Worms game? No, no. no n- never even heard of it. Neither okay, okay, okay. It. So you make an army of worms. All right. Oh God. All right. And you can name them whatever you want. 
as long as it passes the Jeff. filter. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, All right. One through th- Jeff, but here's one the thing. Here's the thing. Thousand. These aren't your uh, normal everyday worms. These worms are advanced worms. Oh no, they're military tistic worms. Oh, you you want bazookas, holy hand grenades, banana bombs, dynamite. Vehicles get in tanks and helicopters, <laughs> and it's like basically a it's like a round based battle game where you try to kill all the other worms. Huh. It's it, it's it's a silly fun game. Hmm. It's on Game Pass, so what can I say? Like that's only when you get your better internet, Gary. We get the Dream boys, it. and we all. Spend. Oh yeah, I've been down. Um, after- after that, uh, Among Us updates in the mail. And Among Us coming to Xbox. A little late, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Hype's kind of yeah, gone from that game. Remember remember when the, we were kind of hyped for the fourth map? Yeah, that happened. Yeah, and then we like, stopped. Yeah, I mean, it was big for a little while, and then it just kind of fell I'm off. I'm sure it would be fun, but it's just like... Yeah, I just can't find a reason to get play it right now. Yeah. Yeah, can I? Uh, then they showed Age of Empires. Some my Microsoft Flight Sim stuff. The Top Gun console. update for that. Oh my god. Yeah. It looked cool. And then they did the giant Forza Horizon stuff. Which is the same reveal every single time, by the way. Basically. They, they do the where they drive around in a car to show off the map. And yeah. then all of a sudden, it's four or five or fifteen of their their people from the studios playing the game. And it never plays out like that. Supercar, never, an off-road car. Never plays uh, out stuff. like that. Yeah, and it's never like that, ever. Yeah. But all for like the last three, maybe honestly, maybe all five of those games, they've done the same exact reveal thing. Yeah. So take that for what you will. Um, and then, then after that, they closed out with that Redfall game that looks pretty interesting. Yeah, as the, the vampire like, thing. Yeah, so yeah. it's like that hero. Sh- it looks like a hero shooter, four-player co-op hero shooter against vampires. So looks interesting, and that's how, what they ended it on. So, um, was there anything else noteworthy from E3 at all before we wrap it up? Or, I mean, you guys don't really have a Nintendo. You guys don't have Switches. So. I do have a Switch, but like I've never played it. What? I mean, I'd be down. What? What do you got on it? I don't even know. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I'd be down to play Mario Kart if it was there or something. Um, you and Bacon play Mario Kart? Nitro League, uh, Mario, or Nitro Mario Kart League or something. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you think people get mad at NASCAR Heat? Mario Kart would be another so level. You green shelled me. In the last turn, blue shell. The arguments, man. The arguments that would come out of Mario Kart League. Holy crap! That would be the funniest content on my channel ever. I would have to include like the the audios and stuff because that would just be iconic. I mean, like on my Switch, I have Mario Kart Eight, um, Smash. If you Smash, it's Smash. Um, Pokemon Odyssey, but like new games coming out for Mario. Mario Golf's coming out in a couple days. They're doing like a Mario Party Superstars with like the like the most famous like boards and then mini game stuff. So like a compilation of Mario Party, which is interesting. Um, Super Monkey Ball remake. So that's pretty cool. But yeah. There's some interesting stuff, but I see Nintendo's kind of the oddball of the gaming industry, which is fine. Yeah. They do their own thing and they're really successful at it, so. Yeah, very much so. Uh, that's pretty much I got. Yeah, I really so I don't guess, know. I guess since we're still talking about games, I guess there's two things. Um, F1 released a trailer for 2021 again today. Nothing too new. There's a couple little clips of the breaking point thing, which looked kind of cool. Um, Personally, uh, I wanted to see some... 
Actually, I don't know what I wanted to see, but uh, I'm not going to really touch the breaking point much. I'm definitely going to watch it, but I'm not going to play it myself. Yeah, um, that is what it is. And then um, you got to wonder when NASCAR is going to get announced at this point. I think, what is it, June 16th? I'd give it, I mean, I'm sure before this time next month, we'll have an, an announcement. Because you got to think the game comes out in three months. Yeah, it'll be out in September. Um, so they have to. I I think it if they're smart, I would I'd be announcing it within the next two three weeks. I'd be. I would have announced it. I mean, I personally would have gotten it out of the way already. E three weekend would have been a great time to do it. Um, and my thing is, this is kind of a story with the seven hundred four. I don't think they're very good at marketing. I agree with well, that. Well, now they've got mo- Motorsport Games handling the marketing too, right? But the, the point, that's not the point. The point is the history. It's been really bad marketing. Yes. And I would have thought Motorsport Games would have been able to take take better control of that. But obviously, it doesn't seem like I it. I mean, we haven't. We well, haven't. yeah, it doesn't seem like it so far. But I mean, like they could announce they're it. They're just waiting till late to announce it. Yeah, they could be waiting late and go really hard, you know, but we don't yeah, know. Exactly. Um and honestly I know it'd be really cool. Maybe Gary could hook us up is when they announce the game, maybe we get a uh seven oh four guy on the podcast. Oh. Wink wink. Wink. I mean wink. I could try. What's seven oh four? Oh my god. <laughs> Thunder mm-hmm. Motorsport Games now, dude. Um, you know what I mean. I know what you mean, but I mean you never know. I could at least try. We could get Rusty Walrus on or something. That's who I was thinking of. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, we'll see what we can work out. I think we would have to wait until more details come out too of the game. Yeah, probably. So then we can be like, so how does what like you- this three degree temperature two hours later in this race affect the handling of our car at lap? 233 of 267 you know and then we can also be like so how are we gonna know when it's gonna start raining because you added weather to the game yeah, yeah. game wink wink there better be weather in this game please they're, they're seriously please eight road courses no reason to not have weather in this one in my opinion i don't know i honestly don't think we're getting it but there's we should have it changes in cloud cover would that be good too, enough yes that too Oh. All right, let's let's not open up this topic because this podcast yeah. is going for another. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Uh oh, boys. Okay, wait. This might be a different topic. This is a different topic. Okay. NASCAR. So yes. Kurt Busch. Go to Twitter. All Let's right. Go. One hour. One hour ago, Justin Mark. Tweeted track house exclamation. exclamation yeah yeah it's not that yeah yeah track house says exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point. a lot of exclamation points there's more than two there for a car team there are six car team actually um I don't know what to make of that <laughs> um. It's a weird thing, huh? That we, you know, door bumper, door bumper clear says something's happening this week. This is randomly happening on a Wednesday night. Who knows? Right? Track house expansion Maybe. news. That would be shocking for them to be the first one to pull the trigger, right? Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't think, think twenty three eleven to do it first. Yeah, you have to wonder now. Kurt, if it's Kurt, man, it would it would seem really weird for Kurt to go there, wouldn't it? Out it would, of his other choices, yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't go with Toyota. With obviously, I mean, right now, I mean, Chevy's got some good speed, but Toyota, I mean, just seems to be the way. I mean, he's at the end of his career, anyways, pretty much. So, yeah, I think that would be his best bet is to stick with the Toyota stuff. Mhm. Um. Yeah, I mean, 
interesting that things might be uh happening. Yeah, we'll have a good idea probably in a couple more days what the heck is happening. Uh, yeah. Next week might be interesting. Oh, I think I think we'll have a lot more stuff to talk about next week with racing stuff, which will be nice. Yeah, um, we might have to talk about. Is there anything? Is there anything left to talk about tonight? Anybody? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't have anything else. I think just, just a random fun fact on uh, NASCAR Reddit. Uh, Kevin Harvick led ten laps at Darlington this season. Those are the only laps Stuart Haas has read, led at a non-plate track in 2021. Holy fuck. That is, that is the perfect fact to end the podcast right there. Um, <laughs> Just end it there. Continue <laughs> like that. So, um, yeah. Um, very unfortunate for Stuart Haas Racing. They are way off right now. And you know what, Jay? I'm going to let you take the conclusion here because I'm going to go say goodnight to my dad real quick. <laughs> Uh, I was not paying attention. I was on Twitter. <laughs> oh God! I have been exposed. Uh, what, what's yeah, happening? I guess we're ending the ending the podcast. So. Okay. Well. Uh, where did Gary last leave off? Because again, I was not paying attention. Uh. Well, now I'm back. So. Okay, well, <laughs> I can just I, I can just do Twitter, it myself. And I had tuned you out, Max. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, no, we're good. I can come back now. Montreal's up 3-1, by the way, at the end of this podcast. But uh, as always, like I like to say, if you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. Next week, we'll have Nashville to go over, as well as some uh, Formula One. Hopefully, some silly season news. And uh, I don't know. Maybe some F1 silly season news. Maybe it's going to spark up a little bit more, too. So we'll have to wait and see. But if you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. Thank you once again for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Have yourselves a great night, everybody.